If you actually want something, you can have it. You have to treat yourself like you matter. Because if you don't, then you don't take care of yourself and you become vengeful and, and, and cruel. And you, you, take, you take it out on people around you and you're not a positive force. None of that's good. So you suffer more and so does everyone around you. And there's a malevolence that enters into it. None of that's good. So that's what happens if you don't treat yourself like you matter. The first thing I would say is, well, you should be afraid of taking risks and pursuing something meaningful. One of the main reasons that people don't get what they want is because they don't actually figure out what it is. And the probability that you're going to get what would be good for you, let's say, which would even be better than what you want, right? Because, you know, you might be wrong about what you want easily, but maybe you could get what would really be good for you. Well, why don't you? Well, because you don't try. Life is a challenge that in some sense can't be surmounted. So there's no way out of your problem, but there are certainly proper ways of dealing with it. Yeah. Sit on your bed one day and ask yourself, uh, what's what remarkably stupid things am I doing on a regular basis to absolutely screw up my life? I would say that the goal in life is to conduct yourself so that life improves. You should be more afraid of staying where you are if it's making you miserable. Clock is ticking. Yeah, and if you're miserable in your job now and you change nothing in five years, you'll be much more miserable and you'll be a lot older. People don't get what they want and they need because they don't aim at it. And it's a hard lesson for people to learn because they're cynical to begin with and they presume that there's no possible way of moving forward. But it's not so unreasonable to assume that you're not going to hit what you don't aim at or you're not going to hit what you aim at and don't shoot at. We're built to contend with the world. We're built to contend with reality. You want a challenge, and the best way that you can take on a challenge, because a challenge fortifies you. So you don't want to be secure, you want to be strong. And you get strong by taking on optimal challenges. And so you lay out your destiny in the world, and you take the slings and arrows of fate, and you make yourself stronger while you're doing so. And you might fail, and fortune might do you in, but it's your best bet. A huge part of the reason that people fail is because they don't ever set up the criteria for success. And so since success is a very narrow line and very unlikely, the probability that you're going to stumble on it randomly is zero. So you want to set yourself a task that's difficult, but not so difficult you can't attain it. And then what happens is that you step up improvement across time incrementally. And there's also a certain element of humility to it, right? Which is don't bite off more than you can chew. Right? Don't set grandiose goals, but incremental improvement will get you a tremendous distance. It's a luxury to pursue what makes you happy. It's a moral obligation to pursue what you find meaningful. And that doesn't mean it's easy. It might require sacrifice. If you need to change your job too, let's say you have uh, family and, 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 and children and, and a mortgage, you have responsibilities. You've already picked up those responsibilities. You don't just get to walk away scot-free and say, well, I don't like my job, I quit. That's no strategy. But what you might have to do is you think, well, this job is killing my soul. All right, so what do I have to do about that? Well, I have to look for another job. Well, no one wants to hire me. It's like, okay, maybe you need to educate yourself more. Maybe you need to update your your curriculum vitae, your resume. Maybe you need to overcome your fear of being interviewed. I think what you have to do, and, and this is part of humility, is you have to look around you within your sphere of influence, like the direct sphere of influence, and fix the things that announce themselves as in need of repair. And those are often small things, you know, and, and they can be like your room. Put it in order, because the thing is, it isn't exactly so important that your room is in order, although it is. What's important is that you learn how to distinguish between chaos and order and to be able to act in a manner that produces order. Three years from now, you can have what you need. You've got to be careful about it. 
You can't have everything. You can have what would be good for you, but you have to figure out what it is, and then you have to aim at it. And when you're in the zone, you're expanding your skills at, in a manner that's intrinsically rewarding because you're succeeding. And so you want to set, if you're good to yourself, you think, okay, I need to set a goal, but I need to set a goal that someone as stupid and useless as me could probably attain if they put some effort into it. Now, if there are things about your life that are bothering you, or things about the world that are bothering you, then you want to decompose them into solvable sub-problems. You can do something as simple as just sit on your bed and think, okay, there's probably like five things I could do today so that tomorrow morning is slightly better than this morning was. At least, or at least I'm not falling behind. And those will usually be, it's like having to eat a toad in the morning, right? It's like, it's not going to be something you want to do. There'll be things you're trying to avoid. They're snakes, essentially. Compare yourself to who you were yesterday, not to who someone else is today. I've dealt with hundreds of people in my clinical and consulting practice, and we set a goal, we develop a vision, and work towards it, and it, it, things inevitably get better for people. So it's not a luxury, it's, it's difficult. It's a moral responsibility, and it isn't happiness. It's, it's not, the pursuit isn't for happiness. Well, greatness is what reveals itself when you, when you attempt to formulate, when you attempt to carefully articulate and live out what you believe to be true. It just happens, because there isn't anything more powerful than truth. That's the antidote to suffering, truth. If you ask yourself, instead of telling yourself, you know, what is it that I could do to set things more right today that I would actually do? It's usually some small thing because you're not that disciplined, you know. Then you can go do it. Lay a disciplinary structure on yourself. Get the chaos in. In, in check, and then you can move towards a state that's freer. Well, what happens if you don't treat other people like they matter? Well, you lie to them, you cheat them, you steal, you, you, you enter into impulsive relationships with them. They can't trust you. That doesn't go anywhere. They don't like you. You, you end up alone at best and maybe like in, in, incarcerated at worst. Like that doesn't work. And so you watch the people around you who thrive regardless of what they say they act out the proposition that everyone matters. If you're hungry and you eat, well, that's good, but it's over and then you're on to the next thing, right? It, it's not exactly sustaining, it's just necessary. That's called consumatory reward, by the way. This other reward system is incentive reward, and the incentive reward system works on dopamine, this neurochemical dopamine, which is also the, the neurochemical tracks that opiates and cocaine and amphetamines, the drugs that people really like to abuse, alcohol often for some people, um, activate. And so you might say if you don't have enough meaning in your life, then you're more prone to addiction. And that's definitely the case, even with rats. If you take a rat and you put him in a cage by himself and he has nothing to do, and then you give him access to cocaine, he'll get addicted to the point where he won't do anything but take cocaine. But if you throw the rat back in with a bunch of other rats and he gets to do rat things, then it's very hard to get him addicted to cocaine. And so the purposeless rat is prone to addiction. Well, it's the same with human beings. Kind of have this idea that that you have a certain delightful, wonderful, positive freedom as a child, and then that's given up as you approach adulthood. But the truth of the matter is, is that you have a lot of potential as a child, but none of that is capable of manifesting itself as freedom before you become disciplined. And discipline is a matter of the imposition of order, and the order is necessary, especially for people who are hopeless and nihilistic. And lots of people are hopeless and nihilistic, way more people than you think. And part of that is because no one's ever really encouraged them. The magnitude of the reward you experience as you're moving towards a goal is proportionate to the importance of the goal. So that means the more important the goal you pick, the more possibility there is for the kind of reward, let's say, it's really a state of being that is life affirming. And it is directly life affirming in that, you know, like if you're in a football game and you're and it's an important football game and maybe you break a finger 
And, you know, normally that's, that's a problem. It hurts and you're going to stop doing whatever you're doing. But if you're right in the middle of the game, then you'll be so amped up on this reward system that it's analgesic. It stops the pain. It also suppresses anxiety. People have, had, have extracted unbelievable successes out of catastrophic failures. And so, and I'm not saying that in a naive way. I know perfectly well what happens to people, you know. You're doing fine in life and then you get cancer. And then six months later, you're dead. And all the heroism in the world isn't going to save you at that point. But that's not the point. That's not the point. Life is bounded by mortality. But that doesn't mean that you don't get out there and contend. And you develop by contending and you minimize the net amount of suffering in the world. And that's something, man, that's something to do.